So all we're going to do is take this stuff and put it on the drip line of the trees, kind of like right about there. And we're going to pile it up probably about that high, not all the way around though, only about a third of the way around each tree. It's kind of random. Not a donut though, like a, like a third circle. Yeah. So the drip line on this one, be right about there. So you just go about a third of the way around the tree, come up about that high, about this high, and that's it. And then we're going to come back and inoculate these with spawn, okay? <laughs> it might drip something that we don't want. And then, does somebody else want to start inoculating? I'm going to take this and just kind of open up the pile, get kind of deep in. Okay. Mix it in. Mix it in. Do some more. It's not, you don't need a ton anywhere, you know? So this comes from California? Where this actually it? comes from, this here happens to come from Fungi Perfecti, which is the Northwest. It's only because somebody around here didn't have it. You can get it here. You don't usually have to get it, but we needed it for this class. We couldn't wait, you know? Right. Yeah, you can mix this together. You're good for that. Okay. And then the next layer, you'll add some more when that, when, when that right. stuff comes on top. Yeah. Got it. Okay? okay? Yeah. You kind of dig in? A dig in, work it in. You're going to make a little bit go a long way. You want to mix just a little bit through as much area as you can. Okay. Okay? Crumble it in, you know? Done. Yeah, and then maybe here some more. Then mix that, mix that into there, and then add more and mix it in. So, what, what kind of wood was this? Again? This was um, sugar maple. I hated to kill it, but it was just no, making a hot movie. So any 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 hardwood. hardwood. Hardwood is fine. Yeah. Actually, it might. Greg. Greg, do you grow? Do you bother to worry about whether it's conifer or hardwood for wine caps area? I use hardwood sawdust. I don't use wood chips. I use okay. the sawdust yeah. from. I don't know if it works on conifers or not. Do you? Uh, I, I have, not that I know of. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any trouble with the chickens scratching this out? We don't have chickens running around here. Oh, so that one. Yeah, they would totally scratch this up. Yeah. yeah. And they'd take those to the You'd have to put a, a, a fence around right. it, you know? Yeah. Why is once it's, <laughs> once it's totally colonized and you've gotten many flushes, then they can scratch in it, you know? You just, and then you can come back and add more stuff on top, but it'll probably come back. You know, but until then, no, they'll tear it up totally. We want to be about at least this high and wide, okay? So all this will go on top of there. We're going to take it to right here. That's how much we're going to do. You definitely want to go online and get a really good idea of this mushroom. Don't just eat any mushroom that comes out of this wood, you know? It's got to be the right one because we may, we may not be successful. Some other wood-eating mushroom could come out of it. So get a good idea. If you have any questions, bring it to me. I'll be happy to tell you what it is, okay? Or at least what it's not. <laughs> I may not know what it is, but I'll know it's not wine caps feria. An important way to tell any mushroom is to do a spore print. Do people know what a spore print is? It's incredibly easy. You take a mushroom and put it on a piece of paper. And it'll drop spores and they'll have a color. That doesn't guarantee anything, but it gives you one piece of IDing it. Okay? Then there are guy, field guides that show the wine caps feria, But also, it's got a very distinctive way when it opens. The veil, which is the... the membrane that kind of covers the, the um, bottom of the mushroom as it's opening breaks apart and almost looks like teeth so it's very distinctive okay and it's a very big you know you can tell even if it's not that big when it starts it's going to be a big mushroom it's a vigorous big mushroom and there's plenty of ids in it but if you have any doubts bring it to me and be sure you know don't eat a mushroom you're not certain of ever you know this by the way is what about the size we're looking to end up with when we're done this is a nice size here so that is once it's inoculated, just start piling on again. And then you always, and when you end, even if you got the right shape, you want to pile a little bit more on top so none of the spawn gets hit by the sun. Okay. You know? So we'll take it from the yeah, just cap from it. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. That's the right size, but just cap it. Yeah. Uh, what was going on? Was it raining Saturday? It wasn't, but they were calling for tons of rain. Okay. So does anybody understand, have questions about why it's a third under each tree? Yeah. No. Okay. That is because Michael Phillips, who wrote The Holistic Orchard and came and presented here, recommends that you not try to have the same environment under the tree. You have diverse environments. So you'll have an area where there's wood chips 
and then there's an area where rotted straw is, and then there's an area that's got things like comfrey and stuff growing. And you rotate that around so that there's diversity happening all the time. This is actually giving the mycorrhizae under the tree a break from the grass. The grass kind of, does everybody, I say mycorrhizae, that's a big word. Does anybody not know what it means? Okay, so mycorrhizae are other fungi that have a symbiotic relationship with trees. And the trees do way better when the mycorrhizae do well. And they grow on the surface and grass can kind of push them lower than they want to be and they just stop growing. So by suppressing the grass, the mycorrhizae will flush here and help the tree. And then we're actually putting fungal activity on top, which will break this down quicker, and those kind of nutrients are perfect for the tree. So that's why we're doing it this way, but we don't want to have that environment everywhere. We want to have mixed environments so the tree gets, just like we want a mixed diet, you want the tree to have a mixed, a mixed environment. So that's why we're doing it this way. Now, why are you doing that drip line instead of in further? Um, the drip line is where you want to have the action, you know, the, where the most activity is, where the most for the micro. For the, for the mushrooms. No, for the for the, for the roots. For yeah, yeah, yeah. The the yeah. mycelium of the mushroom elongates or extends the root systems of your plant, so they can get more nutrients, more water. So it's feeding the mushroom. The mushroom's feeding the tree. Yeah, sir. As the mycelium breaks down these wood chips, it's going to fertilize the ground even more. And it's going to speed up that process of decomposition of all these chips. And it's actually the perfect food for trees. You know, trees come in a forest environment. They're not, you know, going to thrive on, in a pasture. They're going to thrive in a, with, with forest nutrition. So the breakdown of this stuff is like perfect food for them. So that's why we're doing it this way. Anywhere you use wood chips, you want to inoculate it with this mushroom, it'll work really well, you know. And Greg, do you ever use um, older chips? You always try and use really new chips, right? I try to get the freshest I can yeah. get yep. because if you get old ones, there's going to be other... Yeah, other fun weed fungi will be in there, you know. This was, ch this was chipped up on Saturday, so that's pretty fresh, you know. Um, I'm relatively optimistic that it'll work fine. This is a really aggressive mushroom. Things like the oyster, if we don't sterilize the medium, the odds of success are really poor. But for this, the odds of success are pretty good. Is this what kept in the refrigerator? Yeah, to keep, you keep it refrigerated until you use it. It's nice to let it warm up before you use it. Okay. Now, what if you were doing this in an area where it was dry and you were to, like to manually water it? Would that affect, would, would that affect anything, like if you were using hose water? No, you, well, I don't know that chlorinated water would affect this or not. It's, I don't use chlorinated water for things like compost tea. The chlorinated water is not my favorite thing for anything. You know, it's anti-life, you know. So, um, but, but if you're watering, don't think you can water it by hand. You have to sprinkle it or soak or hose it. Yeah. It needs like the effect of a rain, you know, a good soak. You know? And it's good to do it. I, this works in full sun. I've had it just pop up in a full sun garden in a path of wood chips. So it does. But it's going to go faster if it's got shade because it doesn't dry out as much. Yeah, yeah. You know? This is what we're planting. This is his business. What they can get. Okay, folks, let's go do shiitakes. Greg, what's your opinion on how much we, did I use way too little for this, do you think? No, not necessarily. Yeah. I don't make them any, any deeper yeah. than But as far as inches. a bag of spawn to this much chips. Oh, yeah, that's about right. About right, that's what yeah. I thought too, but I just, I haven't done it in a while and yeah. you sell it, so I figured. Greg, by the way, is in the business, so yeah. he's co-teacher in case you didn't know it. Card, I've got him. I'm a distributor for Field and Forest Products, which is this company out of Wisconsin, and I'm over here in Mills River, so. Happy to help you out. I didn't realize you were doing that. I would have bought stuff from you. Sorry. We'll we'll take care yeah, of that for know, the future. Here, now we know. You keep this. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So next we're going to do shiitake. We're going to demonstrate shiitake two ways, um, but we're going to demonstrate them on different logs because it's the only sawdust spawn I have is quite old. I think, by the way, it might work. And I'll invite anybody that's adventurous and likes to gamble towards the end of the workshop to go ahead and use our old spawn and inoculate logs and take them home. I've used very old spawn and had it work. Have you had much experience with that? All the time. Yeah, yeah. I try yeah. and break every rule in the book. Yeah, I do too. It'll store for a year, but I've used it up to three. Three years, years old. Yep, oh, and this yeah. is not three years old, so it should work yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, keep well, it refrigerated. Keep it refrigerated. Yep, exactly. yep, yeah. And I've also like used logs that were older than they were supposed to be. I've cut them when they're not supposed to be. All of it, it all works. There's a lot of rules. Just the, the key things are make sure that whatever your medium is is not already infected with something. Keep it in the shade. 
if it's an older log that's you know was cut you know and not hasn't gotten infected I like to cut the ends off them if I'm going to use them again they've been sitting for a long time because that's where they're most likely to be contaminated and then I oftentimes soak them so that they're good and wet when I inoculate them and I've had near complete take I rarely have had ones not work you know um, similar experience for you yeah, pretty much there's a lot of rules not they can be broken as long as you get Go the buy the book the first time. Do yeah, it correctly true. the yeah. first time. Once you got and a then few stretch under it, your yeah, belt, yeah, then you yeah. can start breaking the rules. Yeah. I've actually even taken like a, a couple of plugs that fell on the ground and just shoved them into a log and left it there. Come back four years later and there's the mushrooms happening. Yeah, like four four dirty plugs in a log. Yeah. Yeah. I had nothing invested in it, it was a log I wasn't gonna use, you know. It worked out. Okay, let's head down, we're gonna do shiitakes and then we'll do oyster, and then we'll do chicken.